Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session today. This is Tijiao from Baidu and uh, Label Wang from Huawei. We will introduce how to optimize the knowledge distillation training with Volcano. Thanks. Next slide. OK, so let's have a quick overview of the project's background. Paddle Paddle is China's fully open sourced deep learning platform, and it is also an AGI framework for industrial development of deep neural networks. Paddle Paddle deep learning framework supports both declarative programming and imperative programming with both development flexibility and a high runtime performance preserved. Paddle Paddle also supports ultra large scale training of deep neural networks. It launched the world's, the world's first large scale open source training platform that supports the training of deep network with 100 billion of features and the trillions of parameters using data source distributed over hundreds of nodes. Palo Palo includes and maintains more than 100 mainstream models that have been um, practically and polished for a long time in the industry. Some of these models have won major prize from well-known industrial uh, competitions. In the meanwhile, Palo Palo has more than 200 pre-trained models to facilitate the rapid development of industrial applications. Next slide. For large scale training, Palo Palo enabled collective training on multiple GPUs. Also supports the asynchronized um, parameter server mode training on GPU and CPUs. Palo Palo used Fleet API for highly scalable distributed training. And now most of the Baidu intelligent services are powered by Palo Palo framework. When Palo Palo do the large scale distributed training inside Baidu, we suffered from some problems. One is uh, when one of the pods in the large distributed job got failed, the whole job failed. It will waste a lot of resources to restart the whole job. Another one is the low utilization of some inference card cluster like K40, while the training cl uh, card cluster like V100 is always out of resources. So we need to figure out a way to resolve those two main problems when training in the large Kubernetes cluster. Next slide. Okay, uh, we create EDL project, uh, the Elastic Deep Learning project as the middle layer between Kubernetes and Palo Palo framework to handle the elastic training uh, related stuff. Uh, currently, EDL uses Kubernetes as the foundation and provides user scenarios, including predicted uh, training methods like knowledge distillation, reinforced learning, and hyperparameter search by using the Kubernetes CRD. And now with three major release, EDL enables snapshot-based fault torrent job pod auto scaling and the support knowledge distillation natively. EDL also highly integrated with Volcano for advanced scheduling features to accelerate the training speed. And EDL now is a Linux AI and data foundation incubating project. With EDL enabled in Baidu internal cluster, uh, cluster level resource utilization is above 70 percent and the job submission queuing time is less than 44 minutes and the failure rate of the job is less than five percent now next slide and then what is the knowledge distillation and what's the benefit for that to some people who are not familiar with knowledge distillation let's have a quick overview nowadays the deep learning model is getting bigger and bigger the network layer is getting deeper and deeper in many scenarios, the larger the model and the more layers, the better the more model effect. But limited by the request of reasoning speed and the video memory resources, large models usually cannot be deployed directly and the models need to be compressed. The current mainstream compression method include tailoring, quantification, and knowledge distillation. Among them, the concept of knowledge distillation is a state-of-the-art technologies proposed in the distillation the knowledge in a neural network paper published by Hingen in 2015. It is a very classic model compression technology that converts knowledge from a complex model migrated to another lightweight model to achieve model co compression. In fact, the so-called knowledge transfer can be understood 
as a training process, which is to use the teacher model to train the student model. This training method is distillation training. After training a good student model, the student model can be used for actual deployment. As shown in the figure above, the training steps can be divided into two steps. The first is train a teacher model, and then use knowledge of the teacher model to train the student model. Okay, next slide. Originally, there are two common ways to do the distillation training. EDL based on user scenarios in Baidu to invent the third way to do the training. Let's introduce those three types. The first one is uh, called the pure dist distillation training. The method of pure distillation training is much like the teacher recording the content of a lecture as the video and giving it to the student for self-study. And then the student learns by themselves according to the course video. Therefore, the pure distillation training is to first use the teacher model for inference and save the results in the disk. And then the student model used the sample saved in the disk and the inference results of the teacher model as a data set for training. Uh, okay, uh, in the training model, no, 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 uh, yeah, okay. In the training model, the training, uh, the, train, the training of the student model is the same as the regular training and the method is simple. However, the training method generates required data enhancement and takes up huge disk space. So the application environment is subject to certain restrictions. And the second one is same network distillation training. Same network distillation training refers to putting the teacher model and the student model into the same network. And the fixed teacher model parameters are only forwarded. And the student model is normally used for back propagation training. This is also the current mainstream distillation training method. This is very similar to the teaching method in the real life. The teacher and the student are in the same classroom. The teacher says a sentence and the student listen to it. However, the training method not only take up to a lot of space for the teacher mode, but also because the teacher and the student have a one-to-one -one binding relationship and the training of the student model completely relies on the teacher model. And the student model has to wait for the teacher model to output a batch of inference and the result can be trained. And the teacher model has to wait for the student to train a batch before starting the inference of the next batch, which has a certain impact on the overall training speed. And the, our EDL has the third one, which is called the EDL service distillation training. Compared with the pure distillation training, EDL service distillation training decouples the teacher model and the student model. The teacher model is de uh, deployed as an online inference service and the student model uses the client's in in identity to send samples to the teacher model in real time via the internet to obtain the inference result for training. It's like letting the model take lessons online and we, we use distillation reader for communication. Next slide. Okay, and there are several advantages of EDL service knowledge distillation. The first one is uh, save the GPU memory resource. Due to the decoupling of the student model and teacher model, the service distillation training can use uh, heritageous uh, resources. That is, deploy the student model and the teacher model to different devices. Distillation networks that were only originally limited by the size of the GPU memory and were different to deploy to, the, to a single GPU card can be deployed to a different cards in this way. User can also flexibly set the ratio of the teacher to student according to the throughput performance of the teacher and the student, which means that multiple teachers can teach multiple students instead of uh, maintaining a one-to-one -one tutorial model uh, to maximize training output. The second one is improve the training speed. Due to, say, uh, due to the saving of uh, uh, GPU memory resources, the student model can be trained with a larger batch size. At the same time, because the student model and teacher model are in, in different pipelines, uh, the student model uh, does not need to wait for the teacher model to end the inference before training. Combining the two reasons, uh, those can greatly improve the training speed. The third one is improve the utilization of training resources. In practical application, we can develop uh, the 
teacher model to an online elastic inference card uh, cluster and use the computing resources of online uh, predictor card to increase the throughput of the teacher model in the distillation task. At the same time, because the teacher model can flexibly uh, schedule, there is no need to worry about task failures caused by the preemption of online instance during peak hours. It is equivalent to transferring the resources require, requirements of the teacher for the training card to the online GPU card. When offline training resources such as V100 are limited, the online card is used to accelerate the training to save valuable training resources. In addition, uh, on offline clusters combined with the scheduling strategies, the teacher model can also be deployed to cluster fragmented resources or resources with a low usage uh, rate such as K40 to make full use of clusters idle and fragmented resources. The right picture is the flow chart of service distillation training operation. In this figure, you can see that uh, the student model sends samples to the teacher model and obtain the inference result, while the, uh, the service side of the teacher model can be added and deleted at will and adjusted flexibly. Next slide. Okay. Uh, now we'll see how EDL leverages Kubernetes and uh, Volcano to optimize knowledge distillation training. EDL support elastic training with inference style services during training. It deploys the teacher model as online inference through pedal serving. In addition to a teacher and a student training pod, a service registry discovery model is developed by EDL. Online inference services are elastic and are registered to EDL's service registry modules um, for service auto discovery and fault torrent. So EDL enables dynamic uh, adaption of teachers' model online instance to maximize uh, students' training through output and the resource utilization. With K40 inference card serving cluster and V100 card training cluster, EDL used Volcano for multi-cluster scheduling. And since by doing side are always short of V100 resource for training, we use scan scheduling for knowledge distillation job to avoid training resource from deadlock. We also utilize the IO awareness in Volcano for maximize the RDMA usage in training cluster. Next slide. Okay, so in order to verify the effect of EDL service distillation training, we use pure training, same network distillation training, and EDL service distillation training on the ImageNet dataset to train the ResNet 50 VD model. The first one to concern is accuracy. In terms of accuracy, compared to the pure training, distillation training improves the accuracy of ResNet 50 model by nearly 2%. The, the service distillation training and the, the same network distillation training have the same accuracy. In terms of the training speed, compared with pure, uh, pure training, same network distillation training takes up a large part of the computing power due to the teacher model. So the training speed is only 35.9% of the pure training with the same training res resources. The EDL service distillation training uses additional online P4 elastic uh, resource and transfer the teacher's uh, resource request for the training card to the elastic card. So compared to pure training, it still maintains a, a maintain, maintains a training effective of 82.8% and the speed is 2.3 times to the same network distillation training. If you continue to use teacher resources, uh, theoretically, the speed of EDL service distillation training can be the same as that of the pure training. Of course, same network distillation training can continue to accelerate if resources are increased, but this will take up more valuable V100 training resources. Okay, here are all the distillation training on EDL. So now, now let's welcome label one for deep dive into the Volcano project and tell us more details about the features and the implementations of Volcano and how it is integrated with other AI and data systems. Thank you. Hey guys, I'm William Wang from Huawei, Volcano Community Maintainer and Technical Lead. It's my pleasure to share this topic with Tito. Okay, let's, let's get started. With the development of industries, more and more domain frameworks are invented and applied to support business development. This framework plays an integral principal role in their respective domains, such as Spark, TensorFlow, and Flink. On the other side, the business model is becoming more and more complex nowadays. It's difficult to handle complex business scenarios 
with just single domain framework. Multiple domain frameworks are widely used together to achieve business objective. The domain framework cluster is, is becoming bigger and bigger, and these clusters are independent of each other. The resources cannot be shared. This leads to a huge waste of resources. Therefore, more and more users want to use the unified scheduler system to resolve the resource sharing problem. Kubernetes is the best choice for many users because of its excellent scalability and uh, ecosystem. As you know, Kubernetes is designed for microservice or orchestration in the early age. When we try to migrate migrate batch workload to Kubernetes several years ago, we found that there are still a lot of challenges for Kubernetes. The first one is the scheduling policy for high performance workload. For example, gun scheduling. Uh, batch workload need all or nothing scheduling to resolve to solve the deadlock. The fair share scheduling for maintenance. Job priority scheduling for urgent workload. The topology scheduling to ac ac accelerate training is central. Is central. The second challenge is job lifecycle management. Different type of workloads have different expectation. For example, for TensorFlow, if the PS and work pod failed, we have to re restart the whole job. Uh, however, for Spark, if executor pod failed, only restart the executor pod is enough. All this error handling should be resolved in job lifecycle management. The third challenge is the heterogeneous hardware support. The high performance workload has higher performance requirements. Many providers produce different kinds of hardware to accelerate computing. This requires the scheduler to schedule the resource uniformly and pro provide the best resource allocation. The last one is the performance tuning. For example, the, sc the, the scalability throughput network container runtime is not only about the scheduler. Volcano is a Kubernetes native batch system. It is designed to try to address these challenges. As you can see, Wakano implements a batch scheduler to provide a rich scheduling policy. A new controller is added to do the lifecycle management and provide a unified interface to, for different kind of workload. We also provide some command line for HPC users to help them to sub submit workload by command line. Okay. Volcano is a CNCF sandbox project right now. There are more than 1,600 Git, GitHub stars and more than 100 com contributors from different from different company and organization. There are there are already 12 releases from from this boy and more than more than. 14 public adopters. Here is the Volcano overall Volcano architecture. Volcano supports scheduling multiple types of workload in one cluster. The resources can be shared among this workload to get a better utilization. This workload might be online microservice or offline state analysis tasks or AI workload. Volcano provide queue for user to plan their cluster resource. It's easy to map the com company organization to Volcano queue. Different departments can share resources to each other when the resource is added. The rich scheduling policies are supported in Volcano, such as priority scheduling, topology scheduling, preemption, reclaim, time division multiplexing, and so on and also support monitoring of resources for fine grain scheduling. The red part shows the benefits of Kano in different scenarios. We will talk it later. The first scenario is showing the 
scan scaling in TensorFlow training. As you know, all or nothing scaling is required for TensorFlow or MPI workload to solve deadlock or bit waiting. In the test, there's there's no enough resources resource for two jobs to run concurrently in the cluster. Then we submit jobs to cluster. As you can see, when we submit five jobs, five jobs with two PS and four workers, only two of the five jobs finished because of the deadlock. The left three jobs occupy parts of resources and waiting for other job release resources each other. The second scenario is TensorFlow training. In our performance testing, it is found that the different placement of PS and work pose affects the training result, especially for GPU training for some models. The course is the host network is better than network across host. If PS and work pod can be scheduled, scheduled to one host, we can exchange data with host network. There are three node there are three nodes in the test cluster and we submit training training job with two PS and four workers. We get three different place placement at last. The result is random with default scheduler. As you know, the group C is the best placement that we want. The task topology scheduling in Wakano is target to handle this kind of issue. You can define the topology of the task in job. The scheduling will get you the best placement based on the input. A notice is that the complexity of the feature doesn't increase the doesn't increase with the cluster scale. As far as I know, some users use the uh, Kubernetes affinity and anti-affinity features to achieve this goal. However, the, compli the complexity increase with the cluster skill. We also do some research on the IO-aware scheduling with the task topology info and IO information. We can, we can minimize the max state transfer latency and give even better performance. The figure shows the VGG 16 model training results with, diff with default scheduling, volcano task topology, and IO aware scheduling. The IO aware scheduling gets a 30% 30, 30 performance increase compared with default scheduling. The result, the, the result depends on the data exchange and models. This, this page shows the Spark on Kubernetes with Volcano. Several years ago, we started to help users to migrate Spark of workload from Hadoop to Kubernetes. We use the TPCDS to do the performance test. It is found that the deadlock happened when the job concurrently is, uh, is high. The main, the main reason is that all the resources are allocated to Spark Driver pod. The external pod are started later than driver pod and no resource available. All Spark applications are stuck there. We have to prepare dedicated node for executor and driver pod to resolve this, pro this problem. However, this kind of node division increase, increase the resource fragment. As you never know what is the best proportion for driver node and external node. A new feature called min minimal resource is introduced based on this situation in Volcano. Volcano creates pod group for each Spark application. The minimal resource is a property of pod group. The scheduler resolves minimal resource for each Spark application and resolves resolve the driver pod over commit issue. It is a job level scheduling. User no need to prepare the dedicated node anymore. And also the fragment issue is resolved. As you can see, the performance improved more than 30%. Next, as more and more MPI users try to submit workload to Kubernetes with Volcano job, 
We can provide some features to help user submit MPI job work workloads to Kubernetes. The left part shows a working job for running MPI workload. User can define the main available resources for GAN scheduling. User also can define the job policy as well. For example, uh, event port evicted action, uh, restart job. This means whenever the port is evicted, the MPI job will be restarted automatically. User can also define the MPI master or MPI worker re replicas, resource requests, task policy, respectively. In addition, we can provide building job plugins to simplify the configuration. For example, the SSH plugin provides SSH authentication without password, and the SVC plugin prepared a headly service for communication among the pod. It is convenient for MPI users. Another, uh, another scenario is the GPU sharing. GPU resource is expensive resource. The GPU resource utilization is not good enough in some conditions, such as development environments and the inference. inference. GPU sharing is, is expected by many users. We cannot provide the GPU sharing ability. User can specify, specify the memory amounts they need. The soft isolation is supported so far. The hard isolation will be supported in the future. Cromwell is a popular pipeline software and widely used in gene computing. Volcano has been integrated with Cromwell. User can use the WDL to orchestrate the Volcano job. The ability has already supported in Huawei gene computing service. For the LPC user, command line is uh, command line is important. They always use the command line to submit to 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 submit workload. We can provide a set of command lines such as we sub, we console, we suspend to help users migrate migrate LPC workload to Kubernetes. Various of SDK language are supported as well. Nowadays, the cluster skill become bigger and bigger. As far as I know, there are more, more than 10,000 nodes in one Kubernetes cluster in some users' production environment. The Kubesim is a simulator of Kubernetes for batch and uh, offline workload. It is based on the Kumark on Kubernetes. We can use it to simul simulate super skill cluster to do the scheduler performance testing. There are two problems problems in Kumark. The first problem is user cannot configure the resource, resource of hollow node. The second problem is the pod status, which running on the hollow, hollow node cannot be updated. These problems are resolved in Kubesim. In the future, the, we, we may add more enhancement for Kubesim. For example, add more job templates to support simulate batch job submission etc. You can join the um, Wokeno and the EDL community to learn more about how to apply and uh, uh, optimize the dis distillation on Kubernetes. We have Google group Slack channel for open communica communica communication. And you can also submit PR and issue on the GitHub. Volcano, Pedal Pedal, and the EDR repos repository. We will respond to you as soon as possible. Thank you for listening.